Hi there folks. In this video we're going to have a look at an older Ivor Johnson 22 caliber revolver. This particular revolver is an Ivor Johnson Model 55 Target. It's pretty easy to identify what these are because they're nicely marked on the top with Model 55 Target, Ivor Johnson, on the top strap there with the address of Ivor Johnson Arms and Cycle Works in uh, Pittsburgh, Massachusetts, USA. These were manufactured in the 1950s and they were kind of a, a middle-of-the-road priced handgun. Uh, they retailed for in the neighborhood of about $30 back at that uh, time frame. A little bit unusual looking the finish on these. You'll notice that the frame is blued, trigger guard is blued, the, uh, the trigger and the hammer are case hardened. You can see a little bit of case hardening left on them. However, these were shipped with the cylinder and the barrel in the white. And you will often see these kind of turning brown from uh, corrosion if they weren't really well looked after. So most of them will look kind of two-tone. They'll be that black and kind of a, a brown from oxidization. This one's kind of a little you know, in between there's some oxidization on it, so it's not completely white, it's not even brown, it's sort of in between. This particular example I don't think saw a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of use. So these are nominally supposed to be a, uh, a four and a quarter inch barrel. I measured mine and it's uh, more like four and three eighths of an inch, at least on this one. And these are an all steel gun, so steel frame, steel cylinder, steel barrel. Uh, all the working parts are steel. The only plastic part are these grips and they have the uh, Ivor Johnson Owl trademark kind of embossed on them. These are a tenite plastic which was kind of a popular item in the 1940s and 50s for firearm stocks and grips and these ones are in really good shape. I don't think this particular revolver saw a whole lot of use. They kind of have a, uh, a wood grain pebbled sort of a finish to them held on by one screw at the rear, and they are a thumb rest style of grip. This is a fairly small framed revolver. You can see where the uh, the frame ends down there. Um, these grips basically add some extra size to them. It appears that they built several models of gun on the same, uh, the basic same action. So this is a single and double action revolver. You can cock the hammer back to shoot single action. You can see the hammer with the back, there's the, uh, the firing pin. It's fixed to the, uh, to the hammer. And you can, of course, also pull the trigger to have it cycle. However, I'll tell you why that's probably not terribly useful this, for this revolver later on. This is an eight-shot revolver, and it is a, a fixed cylinder, basically. So a push, push uh, pin pulls out, and you can take the cylinder out to load it or to clean it. It does not have a swing-out cylinder like you would find on a Colt or a Smith & Wesson. Kind of a, a fixture of many of these economy type guns. This was the sort of handgun that you bought if you really probably weren't into guns a whole lot or if you didn't have the money to buy a Colt or a Smith & Wesson but you still wanted a decent quality uh, 22 caliber revolver. This was the kind of gun you would buy for that. It would be suitable for something like a, a trap line or uh, some informal target shooting, camp gun, that sort of a thing. It's a little odd that they called these uh, the Model 55 target because they actually have fixed sights. So generally speaking when you're talking a target revolver you will be looking at something that has adjustable sights. But our sights in this are, I don't know if you can see it there, but you can see that there's a, a notch, a trough in the back of the frame and we've got a fixed blade front sight. So you're basically stuck with whatever this comes sighted in for. There's no adjustment to the sights other than you could, of course, file the sights if you wanted to. Um, this particular one is zeroed pretty well. If you put 40 green ammo in it, it shoots pretty close to the point of aim. So no need to, to mess with uh, the sights on this one. Let's have a look a little closer at some of the fine details here. As I mentioned before, this is a kind of a push pin, pull out pin type of uh, takedown. So we've got a latch right here which holds the cylinder pin in place. So you, to disassemble this gun or to, to load it, one of the ways you can load it is push that cylinder pin in and just pull the cylinder pin completely out. And you can see that's a pretty simple piece of equipment. And to get the, uh, the cylinder out you want to make sure that you have the hammer on the half cock notch. If you look up here you'll see there's a space 
and that's uh, indicative of it being on half cock and with it in that position the cylinder will rotate freely and if you notice with the cylinder there's a notch in the cylinder here and that notch uh, has to be lined up with the back of the barrel to get the cylinder out so you have to turn the cylinder around you want to get this notch you can see it coming up on the uh, on the side there you want to get that notch right about there and with that notch lined up you can pull the cylinder out because if you don't have the notch lined up the cylinder will run into the uh, the back of the barrel. These cylinders are a little unusual they have this this rim around them here which Ivor Johnson described as an anti-flash rim so basically with the cylinder in the gun most of the time the uh, the cylinder gap is covered up by this little ridge so when you're shooting that there isn't as much side blast uh, and debris coming out of the uh, the cylinder area. Of course, that's not the case where the takeout takedown notch is. There's still going to be some crap come out of the cylinder there. So eight shots, as I mentioned before, and the the cylinder is a recessed case head style. So you can see that there's kind of a counter bore there, and we've got a an empty cartridge here, an empty 22 casing. So we'll just put that in place to show you how that sits down flush with the cylinder. So does not protrude at all, which is kind of a nice uh, safety feature with 22 uh, rimfire ammunition. The cases are not that strong and having them sitting flush like that is a bit of a, a safety measure. So this is one way you can actually load the, the pistol is take the cylinder out and put, uh, put your eight cartridges in it and then reinsert it into the gun. Of course you can use the the uh, cylinder pin to knock out any empties if you want to load it and unload it this way. And I guess while we're at it, we might as well take the grips off and I can show you what lies underneath. Pretty straightforward. All you need is a screwdriver. And there's just one screw that has to come out. And they come right off quite easily. So there we go. Got that loosened up and off comes the grips. You can see that there's quite a small grip underneath the uh, the grip panels there, or grip panel, the one-piece grip panel, and you've got a coil mainspring in there, and there's a screw at the back, and you can tighten it and loosen that screw to increase or decrease the tension on the mainspring. So if you find you're having uh, misfires with this gun and it is nice and clean, one thing you may want to do is adjust the tension on the mainspring to uh, increase the amount of force that the hammer has on the rims of the cartridges, uh, which is kind of handy. But the first thing you want to do before you do that is make sure the gun is good and clean because most malfunctions that are uh, encountered with 22 rimfire firearms are because the gun is dirty. So you want to start with a clean gun and good quality ammunition. And if uh, it doesn't go off consistently, you might want to increase the tension on that mainspring to fix that problem, or at least hopefully to fix that problem. All right, since we have the, uh, the grips off, I figured I might as well demonstrate that adjustment while we're uh, all set up for it here. So you can see you just need a small flat bladed screwdriver to fit into the, uh, the head of that adjustment screw. And you can see that as we turn this in, it compresses the mainspring. So by doing that, we're basically increasing the load on the hammer, and that's going to increase the amount of force applied uh, while firing. So I think basically this the single action is really the only effective way to use this particular gun because there is uh, the hammer sticks up so far into where the sights are that uh, basically shooting at double action is kind of pointless because you have to have the hammer almost all the way back or the trigger almost all the way pulled before you can see the rear sight notch. So having a fairly heavy double action pull is not really much of an issue because it's not a terribly useful feature anyway. So because 22 rimfire ammo is rather sensitive to being hit properly to get it to go off, I'd recommend cranking up the spring a bit there to get good reliable ignition. But anyway, your mileage may vary, of course. Um, let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Oh, the, uh, the trigger, as you can see there, is color case hardened and it's nicely serrated on the front edge there, which is uh, it's kind of a, a feature that you wouldn't expect to find on a gun that was this inexpensive. Interestingly enough, the trigger is actually sort of in two pieces. Now, you'll notice there's a piece here at the back, and that piece here, you can see that pop out when I cock it, is actually what 
lets the uh, the hammer go. So you can see with the hammer all the way forward like that. If we pull it back, you can see that that pops out, and that is basically set that to be impacted by the trigger. So when you cock the hammer all the way to the back in single action, what actually fires the gun is the trigger touching that little lever there, and that lever is what releases the hammer to go forward and fire. So it's a pretty conventional uh, type of action. We have, you can see the hand here come up, you can see the hand come up and that will index with the ratchet on the cylinder to rotate the cylinder. We've got these uh, notches on the cylinder here and they are the locking notches and we have the locking bolt down below here and when the hammer is back the locking bolt pops up to lock the cylinder in place. And of course uh, with the fixed firing pin you can see the firing pin poke through the recoil shield right there. With the gun on half cock the firing pin does not protrude but of course when you pull the trigger and the hammer goes all the way ahead the firing pin comes out far enough to strike a cartridge. These do not have uh, the Ivor Johnson hammer the hammer internal transfer bar mechanism so they don't have that uh, sort of safety feature found on the older Ivor Johnson uh, revolvers. Anyway, so all in all quite a simple gun. Let's put the grips back on it. All right, with the, uh, the grips put back on, let's put the cylinder back in the gun. And that's basically the reverse of what we did earlier. Of course, make sure the hammer is in the half cock notch. So look for that little gap. And then you want to take the notch in the cylinder and you want to line it up so that it'll go over the back of the barrel and just push the cylinder into place. Take your pin, push the latch, and shove the pin all the way in until it latch, latches all the way. You want to make sure that that's firmly in there before you do anything else. And then you can check to make sure that you've, uh, you've got everything lined up. You can check to make sure that everything indexes as it should. Very important not to uh, carry this around with the hammer all the way forward like that, resting on top of a cartridge. If, uh, if there was a cartridge in there, this hammer would be back a little bit. And if you were to hit it, it could go off. So you want to make sure that you have the half cock notch engaged. With the, uh, with the half cock notch engaged, the cylinder will rotate. If the cylinder is all the way forward, you can see the cylinder is impeded in its uh, progress because the, the firing pin is, is poked forward into that small gap in the cylinder uh, for the firing pin recess. And the only time the cylinder is actually locked is when the hammer is all the way back and the locking block comes up to the top. You can see the cylinder's locked there. A little bit of side play with this, not too bad for an economy gun, virtually zero end shake, very, very tight that way. Um, one thing I would like to say about these, if you pick one up and it feels kind of gritty and stiff and you think it feels kind of crappy as far as the smoothness of the action is, it's probably because it's dirty. Um, this thing, when you shoot it a bit, gets progressively more gritty and less pleasant to shoot, but when it's clean and oiled, it's actually it's actually a pretty smooth handling gun. The, uh, the mechanism works works quite well. Anyway, um, let's have a look at some of the stuff that would have came with these uh, revolvers when they were new. I've got actually the original box that came with this, which is kind of cool. This is an original Ivor Johnson box. I think I'm going to set the camera up a little higher here so we can get the whole thing into frame. All right, here's the original box that the gun would have been shipped in. This one's in kind of tough shape, but then again, it's from the mid-1950s, so that, I guess that's to be expected. We've got an Ivor Johnson logo on the front. This is kind of a leatherette sort of a thing, which is basically vinyl, and it's uh, vinyl over the top of basically cardboard. There's a couple of snaps on the front here where you could snap the thing in place. I obviously don't use this box for transport because it's very flimsy and you know old and all that stuff. Uh, inside we have the original documents that came with this gun. There's kind of a uh, felt, feltish sort of a lining to the box. A uh, couple of pamphlets that came with it. Ten Commandments of Gun Safety. Still valid to this day. And we have the original uh, instruction manual, I guess you'd say. And this is kind of nice because it doesn't have too many stupid things in it like modern manuals do. It basically tells you the basic things that you need to know. Uh, anybody that wants to read that, feel free to pause and read at your own speed, of course. 
So of course this thing will shoot all 22 long rifle shorts uh, and longs. Not that there'd be a lot of need to shoot uh, shorts and longs nowadays, but uh, it shoots pretty good with 40 grain standard velocity ammo. So there's the look at the propaganda. Interestingly enough, this one has uh, a comment here about the slot in the shield is for viewing only remove cylinder for loading. I think that might be more applicable to some of these other models because this particular gun you can actually load through the side and I'll demonstrate that to you now. So we've got our empty cartridge case because we're not going to load this inside. You can actually load this through the, the side port. And you'll notice through the side port that when the gun's in the half cock notch or when you when you cock it, cock it or, or fire it, it will come to a position where the cylinder is offset from that viewing port or loading port. So if you want to load using that you can put the gun to the half cock position and rotate the cylinder so that one of the chambers lines up and you can take your 22 round, this is an empty one like I said, and it will in fact uh, fit through that port because it's the right size and it's in the cylinder. So you can do that eight times or one time, whatever number of rounds you want to load. And when you're ready to unload, you can index the, uh, the chambers back up once again with the, uh, the port. And you can poke the empties out using, well, it's probably easier just to take another item with you, but you can actually pull the cylinder pin out and use it to poke these out with. Or you can use a stick or a cleaning rod or whatever. I'm just going to use a screwdriver here carefully. I wouldn't normally use this, but it's handy by. So we could use that to uh, to poke the empties out with. And you can see there's a slot there that will let them clear. So that's one way you can load and unload. Not a high speed <clears throat> uh, sort of setup. Very uh, kind of a relaxing pace of use. You're not gonna load this and unload this quickly. It's more akin to shooting like a single action army as far as the speed of loading and unloading would go. Anyway, uh, further to specs, I think I weighed this thing and it weighed, uh, what was it, 27 and a half ounces was the weight, which is, you know, fairly hefty, but then again, it is an all steel gun. I got one other item to show you. I'm going to go show you an original catalog advertisement for this from the Shooter's Bible in 1958. So here's a 1958 Stoger's Shooter's Bible. They got a mean looking wild boar on the cover there. And on page on page uh, 153, they have the listing for Ivor Johnson revolvers. And we can see here they have the Model 55 target listed for $29.95. I put this into an inflation calculator and that worked out to basically about $270 in today's money. So you can read the little blurb on that if you want to. They say that these were available with uh, the four and a quarter inch and six inch barrels. So there you go.